Hi, I'm Kevin Yu. I'm a registered associate marriage and family therapist. And today I wanted to share with you four workouts that help you improve your mental health, which are physical activity, words of affirmation, setting boundaries, and mindfulness. These four activities are designed to help you live a more balanced lifestyle, but not only just focusing on physical health, but also incorporating your mental health. So the first workout is physical activity. So one of the reasons why physical activity has been important to me and my lifestyle is it really helps me with my stress, anxiety, depression. I wanted to challenge you to use this assessment called the BDI, which stands for the Bex Depression Inventory and it's a free 21 question test. And the test is gonna assess for your depression to see if it's severe, if it's mild, if it's very low. And knowing where you are currently in your state mentally is gonna help you set up your future plans and activities for your workouts and your goals. After you finish your assessment and figure out what range you are for your depression, this doesn't necessarily mean that you are depressed. This is just a gauge to let you know where you might be and what you might be experiencing. Then we wanna figure out what workout plan and goal is gonna work for you. So does that mean we're gonna start setting up a plan that makes us wake up at a certain time every day and we're gonna make breakfast for ourselves? Or does that mean we're gonna work out for 30 minutes every single day for an entire week? Or does it mean we're gonna work out three times a week? Really just depends on where your level physically as well as mentally. So after selecting your workout plan and the goal that you set for yourself, then we really wanna go into the, the scheduling phase. This is really important to get the best results and to have a higher percentage of completion for your goal. And we really wanna set the date, we wanna set the time, and we wanna set the place of when you're doing these activities and exercises so that we are still aiming for that consistency as well as completion. Now we wanna talk about accountability and how do we keep our workouts consistent throughout the entire duration of our goal. And that's something really hard to do. When we talk about an accountability partner, it's just someone to help you keep you accountable to keep you motivated and encourage you and reinforce positive behaviors and you're doing the same for them. So it's almost like a fun activity to bond with your friend or family member that you really lost touch with or someone that might be interested in the same thing as you are. They don't necessarily have to do the same goal as you, but to keep each other accountable, you can work out a structure that works for both of you. If you need more resources on exercises that you can do, I'll provide some in the description below. So the second exercise is words of affirmation. These are I statements that you are using in the present tense. So for an example, I am brave. I am grateful for the opportunity, I am beautiful, and you start practicing saying these out loud or writing these down to help shift your mindset into more of a positive mindset. When I brush my teeth in the morning, it could be like a minute or two minutes, I'll start using these words of affirmations when I'm looking myself in the mirror. It helps reinforce that positive mindset. For the third activity, we're talking about setting boundaries. And boundary setting is a really important step to protect your own mental health, to know your needs and wants and how to maintain your emotional tank without giving too much of yourself. When boundaries are crossed, we start noticing a lot of resentment and anger can develop towards that specific person. A good indicator to let you know when a boundary is crossed is if you're experiencing an uncomfortable, unsettling feeling in your stomach or something might tip you off and be like, eh, I don't know if I agree with that specific thing or that thing is really bothering me, but I wanna say something, but I might feel uncomfortable or awkward of how that person's gonna respond or uh, judge me. A common boundary that I see crossed a lot is if a friend or someone that you know starts just spewing out emotional information to you about their life, about their mental health, about issues or challenges that they're facing and how do you know when you need to walk away or take some time for yourself and understand that after this conversation how come you might feel depleted you don't really want to do anything you might feel extra tired what i would say in that specific scenario and then so you can just keep it at one sentence and thinking about how this one sentence could give you so much relief hey i know this is very important to you I just need to take a take a second for myself right now. Can we get back to this later? Just having that break from that person is, is, is really important to let that person know like, hey, I, I'm important too. I know that you can talk about this a lot. I know this is really important to you and you have a lot on your plate. But right now I just need 
some headspace to, to chill out for a bit. And the last exercise is being present and mindful. And what I mean by that is a lot of the times when we're experiencing anxiety or experiencing depression, there's not that second where you can just take, take a step back and breathe. And taking that moment to really ease out um, and get back to your baseline of uh, your baseline normal state. It's really hard to take a breath. It's really hard because you might be talking very fast or you might be thinking about something and your, your breathing is, is just deregulated. For me, after I select the amount of time I want to do the mindfulness breathing for, I'll shake out everything I have, notice what type of tension I have in my shoulders, in my neck, in my hips, in my knees, checking in with myself and letting everything go, beginning to close your eyes, placing your hands, one on your stomach and one on your chest, and try to focus on every inhale with the belly rising, every exhale with the belly lowering without your chest moving up or down. Take three deep inhales and three deep exhales. After we kind of flush out everything, then going back to a normal state of breathing, you really can take a minute and do this anywhere, every single day. We tend to deprioritize mental health, and that is one of the biggest issues that we are encountering in our society. And the biggest lie that we're hearing is when we are experiencing mental illness, we have to push through and that's the only way it's gonna get better. And that's not the case. And in anything you do, it really takes time to get good at something. Show compassion and be empathetic with yourself when you are really dealing with something or being introduced to a new activity or a new exercise for the first time. And I promise you that anything that you do, it will get better. Just take it one step at a time and write it out when you are feeling a little bit overwhelmed. Thank you for checking out this video. I really appreciate you focusing on your mental health today. If you have any questions or suggestions about video topics for the future, please drop a comment below and please like and subscribe so you don't miss out anything in the near future. Take care.